Hey guys, this is Voitech, and today we're going to kick off a new series of videos talking about Unreal Engine C++ fundamentals. We're going to cover some basics around C++, um, data types, conditionals. We'll dive into some more complex objects that the Unreal Engine provides to us. And just to kick things off, we're going to branch off from our player character series and start refactoring our project using some of these techniques. So, without further ado, here is our little tutorial on structs. Alright guys, so let's just dive right into it. And for this particular example, we're going to be using our Player Character Series Part 5 ending project that contains our sounds. So when we run around and punch stuff, we get those lovely little head effects. Um, but, we're not going to focus on that too much right now. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to take our... Um, collision definitions, which we currently have set as just these repeatable strings, and we're going to turn them into two properties on a collision profile struct. So this way, when we update one of these definitions, every reference to within our code um, is going to just automatically bring that in. And we'll expand our structs later on to include more properties, but for this example, let's just keep it simple and replace these string definitions with member variables. So to begin, let's go to our player character header definition and right around somewhere where our enums are, but basically above the class definition, we are going to bring in our, or sorry, we're going to create our struct. And to do that, we're simply going to say you struct and we're going to say it's a blueprint type because I want to show you also how you can access the structs within your blueprint definition. Um, and then we're going to give it the type of struct, and we're going to call this f melee um, collision profile. And that's kind of it for just a basic struct definition. But we're also going to include this generated body statement similar to our to our class. And then we're also give it a, going to give it a few properties. So we're going to give it two properties. And they're going to be fname as our data type, because we want to replace our strings in our collision profiles. And it's going to be fname enabled and fname disabled. And we're also going to make these guys u properties, which are edit anywhere and blueprint read and write. So you want to try to decorate as many of your properties and um, structs and enums and classes and functions with these um, unreal <clears throat> with these unreal macros because they allow you sorry they allow the engine then to process all of these definitions in a much more efficient manner. So when garbage collection kicks in and things like that occur, um, these decorators are going to let the engine know that, hey, I've instantiated all this stuff. Now deal with it in some sort of efficient way that I don't have to worry about it too much. Now, structs, by definition, are not handled by garbage collection. You can look on the page for more details around that. So you always want to encapsulate them and instantiate them as part of a U object. So a U object is just this sort of generic Unreal container um, that allows you to basically integrate with the engine definitions a little bit more efficiently. So since we're containing our struct within our player character definition, I know that when the player character goes away, all of these properties and the struct definition is just going to magically disappear. So enough about garbage collection. Let's complete our um, property definition. And we'll make a blueprint, blueprint read write as well. And the only other thing that we are missing is you always want to have a constructor. So so we're just going to make a default constructor, and it's always going to be the name of the struct, bracket bracket, and then we can now define. Well, what is enabled and disabled going to be? So enabled, we are going to set to, um, let's just go back to your CPP file. We're going to set it to no collision. 
Oh, sorry, that's uh, enabled. So enabled is weapon. So we create a new F name, wrap it around the text, and then we say weapon. And then we say disabled, and it's F name, text, and then we pass in our no collision definition. So now every time we update these two guys, anytime we reference these variables, they're just going to come along for the ride. And we really only have to worry about updating this in one spot only. Now, because the struct is also defined in our player character, if we then create um, additional classes and we want to reference um, these structs, then it's beneficial to have these guys extrapolated into some other class. Put it, um, you know, sort of outside of the scope of your player because you don't want to be necessarily including your player into your other objects. But we have our struct defined. Um, we've decorated it accordingly we gave it a constructor with some default values and it all looks generally kind of okay now what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring this um, struct in as a member variable of our player character so we're going to go down to the private section of our class definition and we're just going to simply instantiate it f melee collision profile and we give it a name of melee collision profile and that's kind of it this guy um, because it's a struct so it doesn't have the same sort of constructor and destructor life cycle as our regular objects this automatically called this constructor definition so now when we go back to our cpp file i already have this member so i can simply say melee collision profile disabled and then every reference where I have no collision I can just simply replace it likewise for the weapon I can say melee collision profiled enabled and then replace this weapon definition with enabled as well and then right in our um, constructor we also make references to it, so same thing, collision profile, disabled, and then let's replace this guy too. So let's recompile and just make sure our game works. Okay, with our <clears throat> project recompiled, let's now pop open Unreal and just make sure everything still runs. Pretty cool. So with just this minor code adjustment if we go back to our header I now replaced six different references within our code with the struct um, properties now we're going to expand on this definition and include um, just more stuff in here so it's a little bit more elegant um, in future tutorials but for right now let's take a look at blueprints and how do these structs actually play out in our blueprint scenario so to do that let's pop open unreal editor go to our third person character and right on the event graph and if you're not sure how to get there on the left hand side you can just double click on event graph or begin play or one of these events and it'll take you to the section in which we can say get me our fundamentals 01 character and we're gonna say from begin play instantiate this guy and then from our character we are going to say left collision box and we're going to say set collision profile name so this is kind of how you would um, now make reference or rather how you would try to set the collision profile name based on a struct now we don't have the struct yet but we can make one so if we right click um, in our blueprint area and we start typing in melee collision profile, because of our additional decorators on our struct class that allow blueprint uh, readability, we can now say, hey, make a collision profile. And if you'll notice, it comes with our default values, weapon and no collision. And then it also has this guy here, which is the output type 
um, of this struct. But because structs are a little bit different than classes, we can do things like through reflection, we can break out this output into its individual variables. So if you right click on melee collision profile and you say split struct pin, you'll notice I'll get the individual values that represent these guys here. And then in my blueprint, I could say set our characters left collision box collision profile to enabled. And if I have switches and I can control this flow, you know, I can alternate, I can also set in different values. So if this is not weapon, maybe this is fist or whatever a collision profile is. But all of a sudden we went from this little guy to accessibility in our blueprint, as well as um, ease of access and modification of properties at a sort of a global scope um, scale. So if we leverage those structs all over the place, then we have single spots of modification and then just kind of flows through. So that's the power of structs. They allow us to create these mini objects for reusability, uh, convenience, and moving data points around. And again, this splitting of the pin is quite similar to every time you have a vector, for example, and you say break vector 2D. Um, so if we take this guy, we can also split it because these vectors, the quaternions and the rotators and all that stuff, those are all structs. And this is why you can do those little operations on them because they're just these, you know, handy little kind of dumb objects for, for our use and abuse. Anyways, thank you for uh, checking out this little mini tutorial and I uh, hope to see you guys next time.